Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, what the hell am I talking about? Of course you can hear me. It's just I can't hear you. Frickin' went to the Sammy Hagar concert last night and my ears were all messed up. And of course, it didn't help that I went to see Sticks and Foreigner a couple nights before that. And it's just, <laughs> the old hearing's getting whacked. Whacked this week. But good morning. How's everybody doing today? Yep, it's time for another uh, coffee time. And I'm sure you're wondering, what the hell am I doing in the pool drinking coffee? Well, why not? First off, temperature here in New Jersey has dropped a little bit, so that means my pool water dropped. So, and I'm in the pool doing some uh, maintenance to it and everything, you know. you got to do the maintenance every day or every other day, whatever. And uh, it's cold. <laughs> so, the coffee... It's helping me keep a little bit warm while I'm doing this chilly task. So this also begs the question, I'm sure you're asking, I know I would if I was on that side of the camera, what are you doing filming this in a pool? Well, you know, I figured I'm here. So why not take the time in this water environment to talk about something nautical? I decided for my... Um, my model from the past I'm going to build out is a nautical model. Now, a little background on this model. Um, there, it, I go into a little bit more depth in this in my um, how I got into the model video at the very beginning of my channel. Um, but just as a 30,000 foot view um, retrospective of it, 17 years ago, I think my wife was um, confused on what to get me for Christmas and she went and she bought me two models and I remember at the time opening them up and thinking cool but what the fuck you know I haven't done models since BV um, and here we are with models what am I going to do with this oh um, if you didn't watch that video of how I got into modeling BV before vagina because once I found vagina models went out the window and I hadn't looked back since um, well hence I have six kids, as you know, so... Anyway, so she got me these models, and uh, one was a Mustang, because I'm a big Mustang fanatic, and the other one was the Titanic, because I'm a, you know, great fascination with the story of the Titanic. Um, so anyway, she got me this model, and I was trying to figure out what to do with it, and even back then, I like to do things a little differently than everyone else does, you know? So I was like, ah, you know, I love the Titanic, and I do want to build the Titanic, but I want to do something different, and I decided to build this. This is the HMT Olympic. Yeah, the Olympic. Now, some of you know, but some of you might not know. What is the Olympic? It looks like the Titanic, except for that funky paint scheme. Well, the Olympic, the RMS Olympic, was the older sister to the Titanic. Royal Mail Steamer is what RMS stands for. And during the big war, war World War I, um, the Olympic was in service. And with the, you know, with the advent of the war, the British Re Admiralty took control of the liners of the line and they commissioned them to do work for the war effort. Some were turned into hospital ships, others were turned into transport ships. So the Olympic was rechristened the HMT as in His Majesty's Transport. So think of it this way. You got a cruise ship that, what, I, I forget the numbers, and somebody can correct me, but you know, on average 4,000 passengers, you know, um, but when they reconfigured the ship, they were carrying up to 80 to 100,000 troops on these ships. That's a huge advantage for the Allies at the time. Um, also, as you can imagine, if one of these ships were sunk at that time, it would be a huge disadvantage to it. So they came up with this idea of painting these things in a dazzle scheme and all kinds of random shapes and colors and stuff like that. So when you're, the ship is on the water, it's not like it makes it invisible. By no means. They see it's there. But at periscope depth, or even in a submarine on the surface, they are still very low to water. It makes it very difficult to tell which way the ship is going. Is it going left, right, away, towards, 
it, it made it, it made it very difficult. And to the best of my knowledge, I don't think any transport ships were ever sunk by the uh, by the uh, the U-boats. So I'm pretty sure it was a successful um, venture. But anyway, the Olympic was painted. They had actually two different schemes during its time. This happens to be one of them, and what they did is they painted it one way on one side and one another on the other side. But I had just gotten into modeling. This is an adventurous project, even for a seasoned modeler. Now, you talk about a newbie with a airbrush. This is my first attempt at working with an airbrush, masking and painting and all that kind of crap. So this is kind of crazy. Okay. Um, as you can see, it's been sitting for about 16 years. So you can see some, you know, has some wear here on the on the lower lines there, and you know, one of the stanchions here fell off of the uh, the propeller, but that's okay. But by the time I got done with this and started on the second side, this is part of the second side, I was burnt. I was really burnt, so I never got to finish it. But this is still something that's near and dear to my heart. I mean, I love these odd. Um, painted ships. I love liners and I love these odd painted ships. I mean, I've got a whole bunch of liners in my collection that I plan on making into either transports or hospital ships because they're just so unique and just different than the black and white that they, they normally were. Um, so yeah, I do plan on getting back to this and hopefully after I go through editing this video and everything, it'll spark me to actually start doing it again. Yeah, pretty cool. But one of the things that also turned me off on this at the time, again, going back 17 years, 16 years ago, is in order to make this rather um, authentic, is I had to up the lifeboats from the standard amount that was on the on the ships at the time to 72 lifeboats on this thing. So that's a lot of lifeboats I'd have to handcraft. And there's some guns that go on. There's two guns that go on the bow. There's two more guns that go on the stern and stuff like that. I have to make those too. And at the time, that was before um, 3D printing was so affordable. Now I got 3D printers. Um, I don't know if I can find files or not. I have to look, but I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to do that using 3D printing and get this going. It's a really cool project. Um, I really need to do it because I really dig these ships a lot. Now, what else is going on in my world? Uh, I mentioned the concerts I've gone to. You know, they were pretty cool. Oh, you know, the concert. Sammy Hagar is just an amazing performer. This guy is 73, 74 years old, and he is just freaking rocking it. He's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You know, and he had it was a it was a Van Halen type tribute, and um, he had um, Michael Anthony on bass, Jason Bonham. For those that don't know, Jason Bonham is the son of John Bonham, drummer of the uh, of Led Zeppelin. He was there on drums, and in the Eddie Van Halen role was Joe Satriani. This guy is effing amazing. I mean, I'm a longtime fan of Van Halen. I'm not my number one fan, but I'm a huge fan. And um, I really became an even bigger fan during the Van Hagar years. Okay, But regardless, it doesn't matter. I liked, I loved Led Zeppelin. I mean, <laughs> Van Halen. Oh, excuse me, I had a bind-in moment. Um, but anyway, yeah, love Van Halen. And Eddie Van Halen was just tremendous. But I, I'm not going to lie to you, and I know it's sacrilegious to say this, but there are points in this concert where... I was thinking, Eddie who? Because Satriani is phenomenal. Oh my God. Such a great show. Such a great show. But anyway, there's that. Um, oh, let me show you. I've been doing some 3D modeling. This one is not a premiere on my channel yet. I don't know if I'm going to or not because it's pretty much done. And well, I'm going to show it here, but uh, it's still in progress. What I'm working on is this right here. What you're looking at here is Tobor. Tobor. Tobor is a 3D print that I got online. I got it on CG Trader. Um, Tobor is a robot from a movie from, I believe, 1953 called Tobor the Great. Okay. I, I grew up in a time when uh, sci-fi movies were really bad, and you always saw these old, old movies from before my time that were replayed on TV all the time, and one of them was Tobor. 
And over the years, as a young kid, impressionable by sci-fi movies, I really became got this fascination and love for old robots and stuff like that. As goofy as they are, I really dig them. So when I came across this 3D print of Tobor, I had to get it. In the in the file itself, it came. It's it's on CG Trader. I think I said that or not, but it's on CG Trader. I'll put a link down below. But it came with a base, and it came with the child that was in the show holding the control stick, which kind of looked like a Rick and Morty gun, you know. But uh, it came with him, and then a backdrop of like a, an easel with a. It looks like a painting, but it's not. But regardless. But they wanted like 60 bucks for this thing, which is a little bit more than I really wanted to spend on it. And not to mention, it also made it a bigger display. I just didn't, I have space constrictions in my house, so I don't want to do that. So I reached out to the creator and asked him if he'd just sell me Tobor, and we struck a deal, and he did. So I made Tobor, and I, <laughs> it's funny because the files he sent me were really freaking tiny. I actually had to print this. I didn't increase the size to 5,000% on my, um, on my uh, Photon Mono X to get him to this size. He's about, what, 9 inches? I don't have my mat for me to measure, but I think it's about 9 inches. But yeah, he's really cool. There's nothing to him. I mean, it's just a robot, and he's pretty much just silver, you know. But I did take some other silvers and variations of silvers and some mixes of silver to do some painting on them to give them a little bit more depth than just making it spray painting them one color silver and say I'm done you know but yeah Tobor the Great he's going to go in my collection of sci-fi models I gotta get some more of them one of the ones I have I haven't done yet if you remember is Box from um, um, Logan's Run that's one of those I think fits in the way of it there is another one from um, if you've watched um, Star Trek Voyager, I was I was introduced to a robot on that show that I'd never seen before. Again, from the 50s, I believe, um, Captain Photon or something like that. I forget. Um, it was a it was an old sci-fi, and they had a robot in that that they used in Star Trek um, Voyager. I'm gonna get that character, paint that. You know, of course, there's B9 from Lost in Space too. I just want to have a collection of all these really bad robots. They're pretty cool. But yeah, that's Tobor the Great. He looks pretty neat if you ask me. And of course, he's definitely one of those robots that everybody looks and goes, What the frick over is that? But yeah, he's pretty cool. Tobor the Great. Still got some work to do, some more painting, and I want to tone it down with a matte coat because the base coat of paint that I used, he's really sparkly. It's not supposed to be sparkly, so we're going to tone him down. Oh, another cool robot that I got to do too? Robbie the Robot. Remember him from Forbidden Planet? Very, very cool. Very, very, very cool. And I, got, I know I got a scale model of him somewhere in the stash. I got so much stuff in my stash buried, it's not funny. Oh, it's pathetic. But anyway, um, that's all I got right now. Uh, I think I'm going to get back to cleaning the pool, finish my coffee, then go clean the pool. And then... Uh, Let's see if, um, hopefully we have something to blow up for you today. I'm not sure, but we'll take a look. Uh, until next time, guys, be strong. Okay, so we're back at the bench, and we're looking through our stuff to find something we could explode, make a boom. And I think I found it. In keeping with our nautical theme, I think I'm going to go with this. This is another Shelf Queen build that I've had sitting on the shelf for quite some time. Um, more years than I care to, ex to, to admit to. This is a PT-109 from Ravel. Um, yeah, I was digging this build. It was pretty cool. I ended up really close to finishing. But then it sat for a while and got damaged. Um, the railings broke off. Um, railings over here broke off. I lost parts, the parts for the mast. Um, yeah, oh yeah, all the, the bottom uh, rudders and propellers broke off. Um, and I kept saying I was going to fix it, I'm going to fix it, I'm going to work on it. I'll figure a way to, to um, scratch build the mast and everything, but it just didn't work out. I think it's just time to kiss this goodbye. Of course, you know, as soon as I blow this up, I'm going to come home later and I'm going to find the missing parts for it. Never fails, right? 
But anyway, I think we're just going to get rid of this. We're going to give it a, a happy ending. <laughs> happy ending. <laughs> and we're going to give it an honorable ending. How about that? So we got ourselves some explosive devices here. Some, uh, well, they aren't M80s anymore. They actually call them M800s, but they're nothing like an M80 was. Not as much bang for your buck, but this is pretty sealed up. I'm going to have to figure a way on how to put these inside of here to make it go boom because I tried splitting the hull and it doesn't want to split. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to have to cut open the bottom in order to insert the explosives and then uh, seal it back up. But uh, let's see what we can do and then I'll meet you on the, uh, on the field and we'll uh, see what we can do with this. Right back. To show you what I did, like I said, I couldn't pop the hull off because um, it's just it's just too well done. Oh my god, I did something. I did a thing, and it was right. Too bad I didn't complete it. But anyway, so I had to figure out what to do. So what I did is I cut a hole in the hull using my Dremel, and now I got the, and then I was able to slide the M80 right into there, which happens to be this gun port and the piece underneath where the the tower is made underneath fits the m80 perfectly so i glued that into place to hold it there so that's cool now i made this cool patch we're going to patch this over here and then we're going to uh go have some fun at the range right so i'll be right back Okay, so here we are at an undisclosed location where we're going to explode our, our PT-109. And we're going to do a little uh, Desilu Productions on this. We're going to try to do a two-camera shot. I don't know if it's going to work. The sun's so bright I can't see the viewfinder. I don't know if I'm in focus or not. I hope so. Otherwise, it's a waste of a good model to blow it up and not even get to see it, right? We got ourselves a fresh cup of coffee. So, theoretically, this is still coffee time. Let's see what we can do. Let's get ready, guys. <laughs> I have to admit, that was a dud. I didn't expect that to have I thought it I thought it could be massive. Aw, oh, boo. Well, I'll say this. It broke open the seam. I didn't bring any more with me. I should have I knew I should have brought some more. Oh well. That was kind of anticlimactic, but maybe we'll revisit this and we'll try to do it again. Okay, so we're back in my subterranean workshop, and uh, that was kind of a bust. The only thing that happened was we broke off two of the torpedo launchers. Uh, here's one of them. I couldn't find the other one, but we broke off those. Um, a sidewall over here broke. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much... Oh, yeah, and... It split the hull from the, did what I couldn't do with tools, was to split the hull from the deck. So, um, yeah, that was kind of a bust. I guess they can't all be good, but I promise you this. We're going to put this aside. It's been kicking around here for years anyway. It's another couple weeks or so. And I'm going to make a trip out to my local explosive shop, and I'm going to see if I can't find something bigger and put it in here and make this really go bye-bye. Now it has to go. It, we cannot allow this to beat us. But that's going to be a subject for another video. So till next time, guys, please um, live a happy life. Uh, don't let the little shit bother you. Stay away from politics and be strong.